Good morning. Welcome to Unity of Charlotte. I'm uh, Reverend Marty Bacher. It's my privilege to welcome you here this morning and to um, share the love. So uh, we're just delighted that you could join us today. We want to welcome those joining us on Access 21, visiting us on YouTube. Special shout out. We have a special group of folk here today. Miss Kay's Kinder Choir, we're calling them. So uh, thank you for being here. We're excited to uh, just be together in spiritual community. You see, what we offer is a place to practice and learn spiritual principles, to deepen in our awareness of the presence of the divine in all things, in all people. And so we're grateful to have this place to come together. We're here to nurture a deep and mature experience of God through the practice of unity principles. So if you're joining us for the first time today, we just want to welcome you. We want you to sit back, relax. We'd invite you to sign up on our email list so we can stay in contact with you. Um, and just avail yourself of the many opportunities. There's some welcome information in, in the front lobby there. If you're in need of spiritual support, we do have our, Barbara, we have our healing group today, I believe. So today's going to be interesting. I'm just going to put that out there because um, we got a whole lot of stuff going on. But if you survive today, you're probably one of us. So <laughs> we have wonderful things going on in our center all the time. Uh, we invite you to visit our website, which is unityofcharlotte.org, to uh, like us on Facebook, and to uh, sign up on our email list so we can stay in contact and keep you up to date. So grateful to have you with us, and um, come back anytime. <laughs> what is that old line about you don't want to work with pets or kids, you know? It's always sort of a disappointment. Sorry, here I am. Uh, <laughs> how wonderful is that? Thank you, Miss Kay, for bringing that together for us. And um, It's a wonderful thing to celebrate life to remember that we are all part of a whole. And so when we look at different aspects of the divine, we see just that. Sometimes I think of it as when we are looking at a diamond, the, the beauty is in the many facets of it. And so as we look to the young people to remind us what we used to know and then forgot, um, it's a good thing. The master teacher said that if we wanted to enter into a different state of consciousness, he referred to it as a kingdom of heaven, that we would need to become like a little child, which, by the way, does not mean, mean being childish, but being childlike, being open, being receptive, being sensitive to what is around us. We've been looking at this idea of spiritual renewal and what that means. And we would suggest that in our way of approaching life, that we are spiritual beings in human form. But our essence and our origins is spiritual in nature. And so we are sometimes, we find ourselves conforming to the ways of the world. We look around and we judge what's good and bad. We judge what's right and wrong. We judge and judge and judge. I'm only speaking for myself, but you know, if this has resonance for anyone, join me, um, right? Because we look at the world at the level of the world. And so the masters throughout the ages, and particularly Jesus, taught us that if we were to transform our lives, we would do it through our spiritual renewal. We would do it by withdrawing from the way of the world to enter into that secret place of the Most High, that spiritual dimension where we are reminded of truth. I often say we do well to understand there is a difference between truth and facts. We do not need to deny facts. You see, sometimes I think metaphysicians get um, confused or get off track because they think that if they acknowledge the facts, they're giving them power. And so some people say, oh, you never want to say anything negative. You never want to look at the condition. And I say, it's okay to look at the condition. If you come to me 
and you are in need of spiritual healing, and I don't know if this is true for you, Barbara, but you join in here. If you are in need of spiritual healing, we will work with you at a spiritual level. If you come to us in need of spiritual healing and your leg is broken, we're going to want to get you to a doctor that has a specialty in fixing legs while we join you in the spiritual consciousness of knowing the truth and the healing power. Does that make sense? You see, because it is a fact. That is the fact. The fact is, leg's broken, let's get that fixed, right? And while we're doing that, we're recognizing that inner dimension, that spiritual power, that spiritual essence. So we are taught that by knowing the truth, we will be set free. We are not set free by knowing the facts just for your observation, right? So when we enter into that spiritual dimension where we recognize our oneness with life, we see a bigger picture. We perceive a larger story. We recognize that we are connected to the whole. So much of our teaching is about helping us to remember what we already know, or at least knew at some point in time that we are of the one, that we are beloved children of the Most High. I often refer to babies because babies teach us pretty much everything we need to know. Here I am. Love me. Take care of my needs, and we'll get along just fine. (laughs) Right? There's not a baby in the world that doesn't just know what to do. And then through our conditioning process, we may forget our original innocence, our original blessing, and make up some story about who we are. That somehow we're not worthy, or somehow we're not deserving, or somehow we're separate from the source. So much of our work as adults is going back to that innermost state, that recognition. So when Jesus was speaking about entering into this spiritual dimension is becoming childlike. In the Buddhist tradition, they talk about having a beginner's mind, about seeing things new and fresh and what is in front of us right now. Someone said something profound. I wrote it down. It was so profound. Oh, here it is. (laughs) Uh, Margaret Bonanno said this, it is only possible to live happily ever after on a moment-by-moment basis. Isn't that great? It's only possible to live happily ever after if each moment in front of us we choose to be in a place of happiness. I was reminded of this idea. So I decided I needed some companionship. And um, my dog's still on vacation with my niece in Nebraska. And so I've been looking at this dude named Edgar, a little cat. Yeah, do I want to do this? Do I not want to do this? Um, and then I went by to look at him again, and somebody else was looking at him. And I heard the response to me, like, what are you doing with my cat? So I was like, okay, yeah, I get it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so Edgar and I are now hanging out, you know. Um, so, you know, cats are really fun. I love, I love animals, and they're each different. I had horses for a while, and that's a really interesting experience to learn how to communicate and talk to a horse and... And dogs, you have to learn how to, what they're thinking and how to think and think like them. And they're easy because you just give them food and love on them. They're like, ah. And then cats, it's kind of a different story. <laughs> so we spent the first day under the bed, right? Because new space, right? Just cool. And then we emerged. And then it was like, OK, now let's define the rules of life. According to Edgar's terms, not according to Marty. So, you know, and my friend of mine said, you know, cats teach us a wonderful thing about self-esteem, right? Just like babies, they're kind of like, I have a need, you figure out what it is. (laughs) And I'll, you know, we'll stop, right? So I'm reminded of this idea, and I was thinking about sometimes in life, we need to learn when we want to be like a dog and when we need to be like a cat, You see, sometimes we approach life always the same way. And dogs, I was teaching a course around sales, and I said, you know, in sales, sometimes you need to learn when to be the dog, be the puppy to go after. But then there's also times when you need to learn to be the cat and go, nope, you're going to come to me, right? And wisdom is knowing the difference, Right. right? Wisdom is always about knowing the difference of how to show up for life. 
Because there's times in our life when we want to go after what we want. And then there's times when we need to be still and get centered and let it come to us. So um, <laughs> we had this conversation as I was moving here. And um, somebody was like, have you found a place yet? Have you found a place yet? No, no. I said, it'll come to me. You're weird, which is true, but not exclusive of the fact that it will come to me, and it came to me, right? It was a referral to a person that said, my kid has this place. Boom. Perfect, right? So when we start lurking, working with the laws of spirit, we realize that we can't make transformation in our physical lives, in the conditions of our life, without an eva- elevation of our spiritual lives, at least if we want lasting change. Now, we know we, know we can rearrange the furniture. We know we can move things around. And through sheer effort and will, we can make some things happen. But then, when we're not looking or paying attention, we fall back into our old way of being. So ultimately, this idea that we are transformed through the renewal of our mind is learning to perceive reality differently. Or, to say it another way, is to recognize the capital R reality and give left power to the little r reality, i.e. the truth and the facts. So you will not hear me say, let us not look at the facts. But let us not be conformed to the facts. Let us not look at the facts in our life and say, this is all that's possible for me. And rather, spending that time in renewal, in, in stepping away, or however you come in contact with the divine, but giving ourselves permission to do that. <clears throat> I was um, looking at a wonderful book. Many of you have read it called um, The Laws of Spirit by Dan Millman. He has these wonderful principles, and a couple of them really spoke to me. One of them, he said, the law we want to understand is the law of presence. And the law of presence says that time is a paradox, stretching between a past and a future. They have no reality except in our own minds. An amazing thing. We like to think of time as a real thing. But past and future are constructs of our own mind. He says, the idea that time is a convention of thought and language, it's a social agreement. Here is the deeper truth. We only have this moment. Poli teaches us the power of now. This is the moment for us to be present. This is the moment to have the life we want. You see, some of us think that when X, Y, or Z happens, then I can experience joy. Then I can experience happiness. Then I can experience fulfillment. When X, Y, or Z happens, then I will have an experience. And I say low unto you, my friends, that this is the moment to experience what we choose to experience. And then if we experience it at an inner level long enough, it shows up in the outer level. When we allow the, our, our good or the idea that our good is going to be something outside of ourselves, it's cool when it happens, devastating when it goes away. Right? We were given a great line in a passage in the Bible that says to us, this too shall pass. For those of us that have been on the planet for a little while, we realize it all comes and it all goes. Right? And so getting good with the accepting and the letting go is a very powerful spiritual tool. To be present now. Some of us are less future-oriented, and some are more past-oriented. This happened, and now I'm going to hold on to what happened, and it clouds everything that's happening in front of me now. I had a a person I know, I won't use his or her name, that had been in a relationship, very painful divorce, and 40 years later was still talking about it. Thinking, 
you know, you might want to let that go. <laughs> I mean, I don't know, I want you to jump into it, but, you know, maybe at 40 years, or you're 41, we ought to, like, a new affirmation or something. I'm not sure what to do, but, right? Sometimes we think, well, I had, a, I had an experience, or I lost my business, or I had a bad relationship, or I did that, and so now I'm going to be cautious. Nobody's going to get to this. It's like, great. Let me know how that works out for you, right? Rather, if we were to take everything that happens, use it for our greater good, gain the insight and the wisdom of what's happened, what we've learned. Sometimes we learn. I always say there's really only two ways we ever learn. One is by doing it right. 10% of the time. And then that other 90% of the time is, oops, that didn't work. So we don't stop trying to walk. We don't start trying to learn something. We just go, well, it's easier if you don't do what I just did and do something else instead, right? So that trap of either being caught in the past or being caught in the future that hasn't come, meditation brings us back to the now. Being with the breath, being with the presence, Prayer helps us connect with that divine something that is larger than our conditions. When Jesus spoke to us about entering into this spiritual consciousness, the term he used was the kingdom of heaven, but we might just as easily say that spiritual dimension where we recognize our oneness with life and all things. And when we're in that place, life is good and very good. So, Practicing the law of presence becomes key. The second law that I think always stands out for me is the law of choice. <clears throat> and he talks about we are both burdened by the great responsibility of, of free will. The power of choice. He says our future is determined in large part by the choices we make now. You notice that? We cannot always control our circumstances, but we can and do choose our response to whatever arises. Reclaiming the power of choice, we find the courage to live fully in the world. You see, one of the greatest lessons I would say in my life was that I recognized that I was at choice. Create a whole program called Youth at Choice around this whole simple idea that we may not always like the choices that are in front of us, but our power comes from being at choice. Otherwise, we put ourselves in position of victimhood. This happened and I'm at effect. But we can look, look at it differently and say, this happened and now I have a new choice. You see, I'm so aware of the times in which we are living which feel a little frantic and crazy sometimes. I turned the news on Friday just to kind of get caught up on what's going on, and eight, 12 hours later, I was like, what else? Right? Crazy. I just keep telling myself, these are facts. <laughs> this is not the truth of who we are, but, but there's lots going on. There's a lot going on in our world today. And so we get to look at, how do I show up in the world? I can't control everything, but I can show up the way I choose to show up. And I love the idea that in each and every moment, I have a choice. So hear this, my friends. If you ever say to yourself or to someone else, I have to, you're lying. And your power, I didn't mean to just call you a liar right here in church, but if I'm going to do it, I should do it now. <laughs> right? You're lying. You don't have to. We used to have this fun exercise when we were working with these teenagers to do this. They'd all come in, and some came in joyously and excitedly, and others came in with a little more coercion. And so we'd have this conversation about, why are you here? And there's inevitably the one that would say, because I had to be here. And I was like, thank you. Now I can teach, right? I said, okay, great. It's just so I understand. So they tied you up, held a gun to your head. What, how did they make you be here? Well, if I didn't come, I wasn't going to get my allowance, or if I didn't come, I was going to... Okay. So, oh, okay, so let's just examine this for a moment. You didn't have to be here. 
You just thought it would be less painful to be here for a weekend than not get your allowance for three years. <laughs> right? Good on you. Thank you for making a powerful choice. Right? You see, the more I can keep my, my state of mind is what do I choose in this moment? Do I choose peace? Do I choose love? Do I choose compassion? Do I choose whatever we would call God-like? Or do I let those lower level? But it always comes back to I can move through it quickly when I just recognize my choice. I'm choosing to be a victim right now. And then I always have a conversation, well, how long do we want to do this? You know, should we set a timer? You know, eventually, because eventually even I come around to it, right? So it's just like, okay, well... Great. Set a timer, five minutes, go get some ice cream, do whatever, bl lay it out, and then get back on with your life and be an empowered adult, okay? Right? Am I just over-disclosing here this morning? <laughs> but I love in this, in this book, and Dan Milliman talks about he's with this sage who's teaching him, and they come to a, a pathway with a, a fork in the road, if you will. And the sage says to him, make a choice and he says okay I'll go to the left she says our time is short make a choice like I'm choosing left she said our time is short make a choice has he made a choice not until you step on the path on the left that's when the choice is made oh <laughs> Oh, here comes the fine print. You knew there was going to be some fine print. Oh, I have to do the thing that I say I'm choosing. Yes. Yeah, I know. Right? Because the choice is not made. Then it's just an option. But the choice is made when we commit to the choice. And again, our power comes when we make the choice. And the last one very shortly is, or briefly, is the idea of the law of expectation. Now, hear me, hear this, hear, O Israel, this word. <laughs> the law of expectation. Energy follows thought. We move toward, but not beyond what we can imagine. Want me to say that again? We move toward, but not beyond what we can imagine. So you don't get to create a bigger life than your current concept of how big life can be for you. I know, it's true. I'm telling you. I've proven it time and time again. <laughs> what we assume, expect, or believe creates and colors our experience. By, expansion, by expanding our deeper beliefs about what is possible, we can change our experience of life. You see, often I say we don't get what we want. We get what we expect. Mm -hmm. Have you ever noticed that? Oh, yeah. yeah, I know. It's like, oh, it's going to be a terrible day. The universe says, cool. Boy, have I got some options available for you. <laughs> I got some folks that I have not had anything to do with that now they got a project and I'm bringing them your way. <laughs> and just as easily we say, oh, it's going to be a glorious day. And because we have set that intention and that is our expectation, that's what conforms. Right. So the power of expectation is magnificent. So we're talking about young people. There's some, in some interesting studies done, there was one they got in a lot of trouble, but they had these kids in school and one group was told these are gifted students. And the other said these are challenged students. And so, guess what? Their results absolutely were reflective of the belief of the teacher that was done. Mm -hmm. right. And yet the truth was they were just kids. Now, good thing they didn't do that for 20 years, except that sometimes we do. Sometimes our educational system says, this is a challenged child. And then everybody treats them as such. In our teaching, we say every person is a divine emanation of the one living spirit. Yes. Worthy of love, worthy of joy, worthy of being appreciated, worthy of all of our good. We get what we expect. So my friends, we give you four tools. 
prayer, affirmative prayer, meditation, visioning, and affirmations and denials to help change our mind so that our experience of life might be different. So that as we change our belief, we change our expectation, then the universe just continues to do what it's always been doing. Here's the good news. By learning the principles, you don't have to change the universe around. The universe has been doing this all along. All we have to do is more con- be more conscious and more committed to what we're co-creating. Just saying. Might be worth spending some time in spiritual renewal. I watch as we're doing this as a community. I know, I know I fray some people's nerves because like, what else is he going to change? The thing I came in to find is not there and now, it, you know, right? And they're painting everything and they're cleaning everything and I'm letting go of stuff. What is going on? <laughs> and I just can tell you, we're just doing at an outer level what we're doing at an inner level. It's time to reinvent ourselves. Who is Unity of Charlotte for the next generation? For those young people that show up here. You see, church is the ultimate pay it forward experience. We create an environment today for just as somebody created an environment for us. See, little uh, um, memorials around the church of people that donated a chair or a thing or this over the years. So that we might have what we have today. It makes sense to me that then we also have a responsibility to ensure that there is a place and a way going forward for those that come behind us. Just my thinking. So we have some tools. We have a wonderful spiritual community. And we have truth. Romans 12.2 says, And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed through the renewal of your mind. Let's join in prayer now. You guys can come on up if you want. As we simply take this moment to give great thanks for all of the blessings of our life, to give great thanks for this realization that there is indeed but one life, one power, one presence, one being, and that we live and move and have our being in it, just as it is in us. So we open our hearts, we open our minds, we open the very portal of our soul to know the truth and to be set free. We declare this day perfect health and well-being. We know that wholeness is who we are, and we allow that wholeness to resonate at every level of being. We recognize that love is who we are. And so we fully and freely forgive. We release the past. We let go of that which no longer serves us so that we might be present in this moment to love fully and graciously. And we know that we are abundant beings right here and right now. And so we joyously participate in the divine flow of life joyously giving, graciously receiving of the infinite bounty of God's life. It is so good to know this truth. And it's so good to know this truth not only for ourselves, but for our community and for the world at large. And so in the midst of all of the facts, of all of the stuff, of all of the unskilled behavior, we stand and bear witness to spiritual truth. There is a love greater than human love. There is a peace that passes human understanding. There is a joy that resides deep in our heart. And we allow that to be expressed. So we extend our blessing. We bless this spiritual community, knowing it unfolds divinely. We bless our planet with all of her creatures and inhabitants. We bless our brothers and sisters around the world, recognizing the brotherhood and sisterhood of all humanity. And as always, we bless all priests, rabbis, ministers, teachers of all faiths, for we honor the many pathways to the divine. For 
for all of these blessings and so many more. And through the power of the living Christ, I simply speak this word, knowing that it is so, as together we say, and so it is. Amen.